Hello YouTube, welcome to the Kelso Dunes. This is the next stop on my uh, American Southwest photography adventure. Uh, Kelso Dunes are in the Mojave National Preserve in uh, Southern California. Um, I've driven down the road a bit past the regular trailhead and a bit past the campground beyond that. And about a mile past that campground. And um, I'm gonna uh, just go cross country up into the dunes here. The uh, sun is setting in a few hours, and so I want to be on top of the dunes with a view to the west um, as the sun sets. Uh, I, I chose to come further down the road just to be sure I escaped uh, the tracked up dunes, or at least I hope I escaped the tracked up dunes. I'm not expecting tracks in these dunes here, but uh, you never know. So yeah, that's the plan. Go up there, uh, find some compositions around uh, sunset where I can look kind of down the crust of the dunes towards the west and see what there is to see there. And I'll be spending the night here and go back up there again uh, tomorrow morning. It's a little over a one mile walk through the open desert and about 600 feet of elevation gain from the Kelso Dunes power line service road to the top of the main crest of the dunes. Well, it's windy here, but it looks even windier at the top. I can see sand blowing up and over the crest of the dune on the skyline up there, blowing towards me, so it must be pretty windy at the top. You just have to be extra vigilant in terms of uh, trying to keep my camera gear uh, protected from the sand. So, okay, I'm on the local high point on the ridge. All right, I have to pause here just to say that this video will have a lot of wind noise in its first half. The wind was probably blowing over 30 miles per hour at the crest of the dunes, and there's not really much I can do about this noise other than try to just talk over it. Looking east, um, looking back towards the, uh, the main dune that most people climb from the trailhead to the west, or to the north, I'm sorry, more dunes and big valley. And then to the east, I'm sorry, to the, to the west, we have this over here. And I'm kind of liking this over here. I like the idea of looking down these, these dunes in the direction of the sun um, for some good texture. So I think I'm going to move now to this high point right over there. And, uh, and that might give me more foreground. Here, so. So I like this view looking to the west. I'm going to set right about over there in about two hours. So, for foreground, I'm looking at this uh, sort of wet patch of sand. It rained all day yesterday, it rained pretty hard. So, I'm thinking maybe. So I've come down off the ridge into a little hollow where it's not near as windy. And, but I think that's my composition up there, is just to shoot from that summit, looking west, just to show the vastness of these dunes. And, and this is just a little corner of the dunes. This is like maybe 20% or 15% of the dunes. There's so much more here. Uh, it's just really vast. Um, but I think that's my composition. Like I mentioned up there, and you probably couldn't hear me, but it rained all day yesterday. And so there's a little exposed piece of sand that's got some interesting texture in it. So I've got about an hour and 45 minutes to sunset. I'm just going to hang out here, uh, listen to an audio book, have a snack. Um, I've, I've got my, uh, my 16 to 35 millimeter lens mounted on my camera down here where the wind's not blowing the sand around. And uh, so I don't have to do that up there in the wind. Uh, so the camera's ready to go. On my way back up to the top of the dune, I quickly caught this view to the north. I love the textured foreground, the large field of smaller sand dunes in the distance, but also that huge wide open valley on the upper left, which they call the Devil's Playground. But then it was back to the top of the dune for my main sunset shot. While the wind is probably blowing near 40 miles per hour here now, I was able to compose my shot 
and fire off a series of focus stacked images. And here is the final result. And I found this composition on the way back down to the van, with these sand dune grasses below Silver Peak under twilight light. The next morning I was up well before sunrise for the hike back up to the top of the dunes. The winds were calm and I was hopeful for a more peaceful setting. Good morning. I'm back up on the Kelso Dunes uh, for a sunrise shot. And uh, the sun should be rising right over there in um, about 45 minutes, I want to say. And I've kind of picked this location. Um, I like all the little humpy dunes here in the foreground. I'm not at the top of the ridge. I'm about halfway up. Um, but I also like these really kind of rugged mountains on the skyline. They're really cool. So um, I think, and I've got good foreground texture here. So I think the classic wide angle, you know, grand landscape can work really well here. But uh, I'm thinking that when the sun rises, we're going to get a lot of little rim lighting on all these little humps and such. And there's, there's also all the little dunes going way off out there to the base of the mountains. So. I think it's a pretty cool spot. Um, I'm gonna fine tune my foreground location here and uh, and get set up. But uh, I think as far as my foreground goes, I'm just gonna use this textured sand. <clears throat> but I'm gonna try to find out, you know, like when the sun rises, where exactly is the shadow line? And um, I want to be right at that shadow line and maybe even include a little bit of the shadow side in the bottom of the frame. That approach really worked really well for a photo that I took at the Panamint Dunes in Death Valley uh, where I had just this little spot of light um, uh, on the texture, textured sand here. Um, I just captured that spot of light um, in the frame. I don't, know if, I don't know if I'll have exactly that scenario again here, but I thought it was really cool. Um, so I want to be prepared for it in case it happens, but I like that idea of being right on the edge of of, uh, of the light, so. Normally I focus stack my images from the foreground to the background, uh, but I think there's an opportunity here for uh, capturing a starburst as the sun just, or I guess you call this a, stun, a sunburst, <laughs> just as the sun be just begins to clear the ridge line, just a sliver of the sun showing. If I use a, s a small aperture like f16, um, the uh, you'll get this like s this sunburst effect, and so I think I'm going to do I'm think I'm going to go for that for this first shot, um, and so I'm going to focus stack from the background to the foreground this time instead of from the foreground to the background. That just lets me time that just right. You know I can wait for just that little sliver of sun to appear, appear and I can take that shot and then I can take my time to work on the foreground focus bracket shots. So. In fact, what I think I'll do is I'll take uh, two shots for the starburst, one at a, at a nominal exposure and one uh, one stop darker than nominal. Um, and then I'm going to wait for the sun to get higher so it illuminates the foreground. And then I'll take my foreground focus bracket shots. So that might be a, a three or four or five minute um, delay between when the sun first appears um, and when I take my foreground exposures, so yeah, because the the starburst, uh, the, the period where you're taking the starburst photos, uh, there's not really enough sun uh, yet to really light up the foreground. So that's why I'm going to pause between taking the the background starburst photos and the foreground focus stack photos. While the starburst effect worked out great, I wasn't able to capture the edge of light in the lower frame like I'd wanted to, mainly because I'd already put footprints in the sand at that edge. 
So lesson learned here. Hang back further until it becomes obvious where the edge of the light will land before moving forward to compose the scene. After that shot, I was able to scurry around and capture a couple more images before the light became too harsh. Well, that wraps up this episode of uh, my series of photographing the landscapes of the American Southwest. I'm going to continue exploring the Mojave Desert uh, the rest of the day and I'm going to drive through Kelso and then uh, further north into the Joshua Tree Forests and check those out. So, thanks for joining. <laughs>